Generic greetings and welcome to Logic Bots. This is essentially a robot building puzzle game. You will have a series of challenges and in order to beat them you will have to build a robot pretty much from scratch. So selecting the chassis, the motive system, the sensors, bolting them all together and then connecting them all up using various logic systems. It's a game I've played about two hours of, or just over two hours, so certainly first impressions, not a review. Those two hours consist of the tutorial, uh, all of it, there's several missions in that, and a couple of the campaign missions and a bit of the sandbox, so just a first impression scene, not a review, but enough to uh, have my sort of first impressions and um, overall thoughts on it so far. I'll show you a bit of the game and you can decide whether it's something for yourself or not, but bear in mind, there is a demo available, so if you want to check it out and try before you buy, then obviously that's an option as well and handy, so links are in the description for the store page, which you can also check the demo out there as well. So I'll go to continue and show you a couple of the campaign missions. There's 40 campaign missions in total. As I said, there is also a sandbox. You've also got Steam Workshop support as well, I believe, but I haven't personally tried it. Let's just go to Korea and then we'll go for our very first mission uh, called Smooth Line and you will have a series of challenges for each mission. So this one is, if we go on objectives, build a logic bot that can follow a smooth black line. We've also got a secondary objective, so do the mission in less than 1 minute 15 seconds. We've got one that says complete the level with a robot that costs 40, uh, 450 pounds or less. Uh, or we've got another one which is complete the level without using any gates on your logic circuit board. There we go. We've also got some uh, records here as well. We can click view level and it takes us to our actual path. So that's where we'll start and then it comes along here. So that's what we have to follow. We have to make a robot that will follow this line. Okay, so let us try that out. Well, firstly, we've got this uh, chassis. We'll delete this crash helmet because we'll start from scratch. So what we need to do is firstly place the robot's shell, its chassis. So we'll go to main body and we've got only one option, which is the bot gear P6-S. Hmm. It's also got some motors on the right hand side and a motor RPM, so different speed. Uh, you've also got like uh, different statistics for its overall size and uh, mass and things like that. Obviously, uh, the earlier you are in the campaign, the fewer parts you have to select. Certain missions will allow you to select different parts, but when you're very early on, you won't be able to select many. So in this case, we can only select the one, but there are more. If you've got a sandbox, you'll be able to see them all. We might check that out later on, I don't know. But we'll click that there and uh, boom, it's, got, it's, it's all placed down. I must confess, when I first saw this game on Steam, um, I, my, my mind immediately went back to uh, three things, actually. Firstly, the weird round domes that you used to get uh, when I was at school where there were like a programmable dome. I can't remember the name of them, but they had like very, very basic logic. You used to be able to program like set forward, back, left, right, rotate and functions in them and maybe a flashing light. Um, they were probably, they're probably like ancient now, but um, I, yeah, I remember them dome. I really wish I could remember what they were called. Also, the Lego Mindstorm stuff, which was like, I think I played with the very first first edition of it, which was uh, called an RCX brick or something like that, and you could program it to do different things. They had a program on your computer as well. And there was also this weird toy that had like six... It had like six wheels as well. It was like some sort of Mars rover thing, but you could program that as well, which is pretty cool. I think uh, Ashens did a video on that as well. Anyway, so this is our basic, uh, well, crash helmet. We need to put some motive systems on it, so in this case, some wheels. And you can see we've got a caster ball, we've got a medium pneumatic wheel, and also a caster wheel. I'm going to say the medium pneumatic wheel, and we'll move it around, and then we'll put it on here. Now, one thing I'm not a big fan of is the snapping, or the lack of. You can turn snapping on, but it's a bit annoying because you have to click on this. You have to then put snap lines on and then you have to start like adding a new snap line and then you will say place it in a different axis. I mean, it's, it's all here. All of the things you want are there. So I can click that there and that snap line one will confirm that. You can rename it if you really wanted to. But then you go to wheels and then you know that that is definitely snapped to there. It would be nice if there was just a button to just immediately put a certain grid, like a 5x5 five five grid on it or like a... A 10 by 10 or you can just alter the grid that would be nice maybe there is a way that I, I maybe maybe there is a way and I just haven't seen it so anyway I've put this um, uh, left wheel on so we want it as the left motor normal which goes anti-clockwise so it's gonna go uh, that way all right and then this one will go on the other side and we'll put it on there and right motor which will go normal which is clockwise it would be nice again if you had like a like a little um, arrow to show you the 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 way, it, the way it goes. In fact, to be honest, most of my, I wouldn't even say a major complaints, but most of my criticisms are that there's a, just a couple of things that you might want more or easy accessible to when it comes to the UI and feedback. But other than that, I don't really have any major things at all. Anyway, that's in. Um, what we need to do now is, well, let's just, just go to, let's just go to start. And what does it do? Uh, it does nothing because for a start, we haven't put a front wheel on, but it's, uh, 
well, it's, it's it's just sitting there, right? Okay, well, we know it, we know it can sit there. That is fine. What we need to do now is put a caster wheel on it. So we'll put a caster wheel on. Well, I don't want to. I don't want the wheel to snap on it, do I? But I do want to rotate it probably 90 degrees, and we'll place it. It's very hard to see because of where it is, but we'll place it about there, and I believe that's in the center. Uh, yep, that's about right. And then we'll click start again, and yes, the robot actually sits up now, which is most good. So. That is fine. What we want to do now is probably put some logic on it. So if I go over to the circuit board, we will be able to click on our bot gear P6 dash S1 and place the circuit board down and these circuit boards will change size and things based on what you're doing and we've got inputs and outputs at the moment we've only got outputs we've got the left motor as you can see and we've got two inputs for the left motor turning it on or off and then we've also got the right motor which is the same sort of thing right so that is fine now how do you drive them well we need some sort of input or a constant to make it go um, the idea is that you will wire it up with different things so you've got logic gate so you've got AND gates, OR gates and NOT gates, I'll explain those later on. You've also got uh, function gates, so at the moment signal splitters and a dual switch. So if I select the dual switch, I can place that down. That's a, can output uh, essentially a on or off boolean. And if I say, that's currently on, you can see you can click the switches on or off. I can say wire that up by clicking on the green bit and then clicking on the red and then that wires that up. So that is now set to green, which means the motor will be on, or at least it should be. We'll do the same down here. So there we are. That, that should be both of them on. If I do that, it means the right motor is off. So it'll actually just constantly turn uh, in a clockwise direction. So let's try that. And... Yes, there you go. I've turned one of the motors on, but the other one isn't. Excellent. Let's just turn both of them on, and we'll see what happens. You probably guessed it. It's going to go straight forward. And, um, well, because this is a simulation, n nothing ever really goes exactly as you plan because at the end of the day you've got different forces acting and random things like that that might just you know every every simulation will be slightly different but either way uh yeah we've made a robot that goes forward so it's not that good is it okay let's just go back to room editing here uh, sorry this editing here so what we need to do is put some proper logic on it so we'll go back to construction and ah, you can see the wheels are on here because uh, essentially this is still on there i wish you could move this but you can't you can't move that one that's another criticism i have of it like you, you can only delete these bits you can't move them around the board or at least i haven't found a way maybe there is i just haven't found it um so this is what we've got so far let's see what sensors we have well we've only got one which is a line sensor as you can see it says line sensor capable of distinguishing between light and dark surfaces at close range so if we put a sensor on the front that detects that line we can say essentially keep going forward keep going forward everything is fine keep going forward no problem whatsoever that should hopefully work okay so what we'll do we'll say rotation to zero and we'll put one in there and that'll say if we'll, we'll, we'll wire some logic up to say if you've detected um like the if you've detected the black line then activate the motors all right so actually what we'll do we'll go back to construction we'll click on that we'll rename it so it's m sensor because that's middle sensor all right and then we'll go to circuit board and then we'll put the input over on the left hand side there you go so that has the input has one output technically so what happens is when this activates when this sensor detects that black line it will output and say yep we've got that no problem it'll output a one uh, you can click on any of these parts by the way and click on the eye and it will give you a like a, a blurb of what the deal is with it like the cost and stuff as well as what it actually outputs uh the you got things like the logic gates so like an and gate an and gate you can see uh, only output a high signal if all of its inputs are high otherwise it'll put out low so if i plus one of these down you can put two inputs and it'll always output um it'll output one so it's sort of it not it doesn't combine them but it'll check two of them so if both are correct it will then output a yes otherwise it'll say a no so if i connect that up to the wheel we know that that will definitely say no because well essentially you could, you've only got one input so it will never be a yes so we'll delete that so what i'll do is have a do i have a combination I, I do have a signal splitter so i've got a signal splitter it's pretty much what it says on the tin it will take one input and have two outputs so we'll say whenever this detects a black line it will activate the motors okay so go it is now detecting a black line and it is activating the motors because of that but now watch what happens as soon as we go off the black line oh right it doesn't do anything it's not detected the black line anymore it's stopped right 
Now, okay, well, we knew that was going to happen, but I'm trying to just take it step by step and explain what the deal is. So let's delete that. I don't think we want that. What we need to do now is figure out a way for so the robot can steer within those lines. And the way we do that in this case is quite simple. We'll delete that and we will go to uh, this box section and we'll probably narrow it down to about, say, 100. I don't think we need it much bigger than that. Actually, no, probably about... 150 is fine have a rotation of 90 degrees we'll then slap that on the front obviously we've already got this central section i think actually what i'll do i'll put another just to make sure it's definitely snapped i'll put another line on it and it'll go um oh, can i put the snap lines on snap lines magnet there we go and that's going to snap very much to the center confirm so we know that that is now definitely the center excellent so we'll go to box section and it will clamp straight in the center there perfect as i said it would be nice just to turn on a generic grid but um alas anyway so we'll have on this we'll have two sensors now we'll have one line sensor um, actually, we'll have to rotate that down to minus 90, so it's pointing downwards, and we'll have it about there, so it is now pointing down. It's not really a precise, a precise attachment here, I must confess, but it'll do the job, I think, quite nicely. There we are, and we'll do the same on the other side, which will go about there, and that is about right for our needs, and obviously, it's not scraping on the ground because that would be bad, so we'll rename these sensors this one will be left sense and now that one will be our sense okay because it's left and right and then we'll go back into our logic we'll select the left sense put it there right sense put it there and now what we'll do is well how do we figure out how do we make this move well we could say um if this um, well which we could do it multiple ways now this is this is something i need to make quite clear there's always going to be the most efficient way of doing it, but the game is about you discovering how to do it yourself and also understanding that there are multiple ways in doing things. That's the point. And obviously you can then reverse engineer what you've done and try and make it more efficient, things like that. So there's multiple ways we can do this. So this is going to, uh, when, when, when these detect um, black, we want them to keep going forward essentially when one of them turns off we want to turn that motor off we could do we could probably do it like this so if both of them this is what i've done is i've, I've wired up the right sensor to the left motor okay so imagine this going forward as soon as if, if they're both detecting black on the ground and then they will, they're both detecting the darkness on the ground, they will both have the motors on so it's going straight forward. If it starts to veer off course and the left sensor then goes onto the grey area, then it will go, oh, hang on, um, this is bad. And it essentially will not be outputting, it will say, all right, I haven't detected that, I'm, I'm now just going to output nothing. And that will turn the right motor off, which means that the, hopefully the left motor will still be going and it should pull it back in side it should pull it still back back in tide because it'll be turning the other way but let's try this out let's click start and there they go both go forward and you can see it's already worked actually you can see it's sort of jiggling left and right and that's because it is detecting this black bit well then the motors are switching on and off on and off on and off now you can't see that but if i go to let's see if it goes around the corners it does go around the corners excellent let's just go to edit robot and I'll actually go back over to construction and debugging. And I can put some LEDs, you see, on the top here. And that gives us uh, some nice debugging tools. And I must confess, I've never actually... I've never... Um, I've never used them. I've never actually used these um, things here. Now, they have got a pass-through, though, so I can click on that. You can actually right-click and do this. Okay, so if you wanted to like tidy up your wires, understand that what you can do is uh, like you can change the color of the wires as well. So we'll change this to yellow. So there we'll go to there, and then on there, 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 and then over to there, and then obviously we're going to pass through to there. So that should work, and you'll see the lights both when they're both on that means they are detecting the black bit, but when they flash off it means they've stopped detecting it. So there'll be little flickers as it detects both the left and the right. Okay, that's fine. Now it's going to come up against this, and now this one should start flashing a lot more because it is... Yeah, because it's trying to drive out of this area. 
Is that right? No, my explanation is slightly wrong. The logic of the robot is fine, but my explanation is slightly wrong. This is actually... It's actually the other one that it's uh, wired up to. Sorry, I've actually wired it up the other way. It looks correct here, but I've wired the logic up slightly different. But either way, this robot's working, isn't it? That is working pretty much perfectly. It's not a very fast robot, and I don't think it's going to beat my previous time of 1 minute 18 or something, but, you know, we'll see how it goes. Hmm. Today's robot building beverage is a nice cup of tea. Um, it's not going to beat my time, and it is quite slow, isn't it? But, I think it is quite efficient. There is a problem with this robot, however, and that... Well, the problem might become apparent in the next mission. The problem is that it, at some point, might have both wheels turn off. There's the level complete, and actually, I've just got another uh, achievement here, which is who needs logic, because I didn't actually use any logic circuits in this, because all I used is the inputs. I didn't use any logic circuits, any logic gates. Now, I could have done it another way, so I'll show you another way to do it. I will... Um, get rid of these lines like so. Uh, do I want to, do I want to pass throughs? No, let's just get rid of these lines because we don't. No, we'll, we'll keep the pass throughs on. What I want to do is show you a different way of doing it. So we'll get rid of these lines and we'll have some dual switches and we'll say turn that on and then turn that on there. So this is another way. So this is essentially saying the motors are always on regardless of what we do. Okay, but now what we want to do is say that if the left sensor is if the left sensor detects anything, um, which outputs this? I think it's that one. If the left sensor detects the grey one, then reverse the then reverse the motor. Is that right? We'll find out in a second. So it's always on unless these detect something, in which case it's going to reverse it. And yeah. Yeah, I got it slightly wrong. You see what's happened there? Because you start on a big black area here, it's uh, actually reversed off, and now it's um, going forward. You can see physics happening. Yeah, that's that's good. Uh, now, but to be fair, I might... <laughs> I wonder if there's a way to cheat by just turning it this way and going around. No, no, that's that's not working at all. Okay, maybe that didn't work as exactly as planned. Uh, is there another way of doing it? The other way of doing it would be to use not gate and that would actually swap it so it would be that to that then that to that that to that and that to that go there we are so the way, the way it's working now is essentially instead of um outputting yes if there's a if it's detecting the black bit and no if it's detecting this it's actually flipped those it's actually flipped it. So for our purposes, it works better. And what's happening is you might not be able to tell really the way it's moving, but when these clip the other sides, it's actually reversing the motor. It's not just stopping the motor, it's reversing it. So technically, this can take tighter turns because it is turning the robot a bit better. Let's just go all the way to this bit. I've sped it up, you can see on the left-hand side here. And it should be taking these turns a bit better. I think it is. I think it is actually taking those turns a bit better. All right, there we go. And we'll get to the end. And there you go. That's it done. And it didn't cost too much either. So we'll go to menu and we'll try the next one. So here we are. This is our robot. We'll delete that one because it is... Actually, do we want this one? No, that is my old one. So let's delete that. And we will load the one I've just had. And you can save all of your bots as well. So, you know, there's no need to rebuild them. And let's see what happens if we actually start this. So this is going to have slightly tighter turns. Very tight turns, actually. As you can see, we've got a 90 degree. And, oh yeah, that seems to manage that one quite nicely, actually. That's fine. And let's see what happens when it comes to this corner. It will, yep, yeah, there you go. Again, turn around. Right, this is, this is good. But... This is where I've been quite stuck. I've been messing around with this map for about 15, 20 minutes. Actually, probably half an hour now that I think about it. And I've not managed to get this corner done. It is a bit of a nightmare because you will turn, 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 turn and get stuck. Because they are now detecting black on this bit and they've stopped. So, what is the solution? Well, there are many solutions. However, I think the best solution is to move that part around the back. 
Now you might think, what on earth am I doing? Well, it's the problem is it's the placement of the wheels. Because the wheels are at the back, the front wildly steers left and right. That's the issue here. Whereas if you put it on the back, it should be closer to the center of um, traverse. So let's go. Ah, um, oh, slight problem here. This arrow doesn't start all black. So we can't have that. Okay, what I'll do, I will reverse the logic. No, that wouldn't work. This is where actually the map starts becoming a problem. I don't know whether... I really don't know whether this... This, like, area here that's slightly bigger, that's black, is a... I don't know whether that's done on purpose or not. I don't know whether that is just, it's a random shape, or whether it is specifically made so you can't do certain things, because I have had problems with it. Anyway, which is the best way of going about this? Well, let's try some, let's just delete all of these here, and I'm going to delete the uh, the constants, and I'm actually going to delete these LEDs, because it's just more to wire up, and I think you understand that things turn on and off now. So... We will have this as probably a dual switch, and we'll say turn them on, no problem whatsoever. And as it's going along, I want it to... Hmm, I probably want it to... If the left sensors... Hmm, hang on. Right. We're going to have a bit of a problem here, aren't we? I've also hit that there. You know what's going to... What's? I think I could make a couple of decent robots, but this... This is going to cause the problem. Because Let me just go to this here. We'll turn these off, and we'll start. Yeah, look, you can see that this actually starts out the back. See that starts out the back? Hmm... And the black bit isn't over and it's curved out. So if I say turn a motor when it's grey, it's going to do it now. If I do it the other way, then it's going to automatically hit it, both of them, as soon as they hit this corner rather than there. And I can't splay them out because this is also bored out. So that's causing me issues. What I think we could do, actually, is go for another dramatic redesign. And the question is, can you put... I've never even tried this. Can you put... The box section on. Hmm. Delete that. Can you put the box section on like this? And put the wheels on the box section. You can! Right, this actually changes things then. Because we might be able to get away with just putting a big lump of box section on either side and having the wheels pretty much where I wanted them to go in the first place. We'll move that back to the front again. Um... Strangely, this snapping isn't on, so we'll we'll go back onto them snap lines and we'll put both of them visible. Click back to that, move the part, and then click it onto there. We'll then take the box section and we'll have it as, I think, a, four, a 500 length, which will go... No, we don't need 400 will be more than sufficient, and we'll put it on there. And then on the other side, we'll do the exact same thing, which will go there. And then finally, wheels, which we'll put on right on the corner there. And then we'll put another one right on the corner there. Now, the question is, will it actually function? I don't know, because I've never tried this. Caster wheel will go on the back like that. And then... Will it actually have... Well, the motor controls are there. Let's just start it. Oh, of course. I. What I need to do is turn them both on. It is making noise, but it's not making progress. Because that's already been thought of, hasn't it? The motors are on, but the, motor, the wheels are not connected to the motor. I mean, we could put them like that, but if I'm honest with you... It's uh, going to be dragging itself <laughs> close to the center. Which is... Oh, God, no. That's just so terrible. Do you know what, though? We could... We could I reckon we could probably make this work. <laughs> uh, maybe not. Maybe not. But we'll, 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 we'll give it our... We'll give it our utmost. Hang on, then. 
So we'll put it there. And then this one will go there. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to put my sensors on the front. Zero degrees rotation. And I'll actually move that to there. Hang on. It's putting on a weird angle, isn't it? Move to there for now. Then move back to there. And we'll put another one there. All right. We'll rename that one LSense. And then this one RSense. And then we'll go back to the logic. So, if the left sensor detects um, a problem, or it detects the dark areas go right, or reverse the motor, and then the other way around it. But that's going to make it go backwards, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, and we're heading over here now, apparently. <laughs> right, so we'll get rid of that, get rid of that, and we will have two NOT gates on it. Gates. The other gates are, at the moment anyway, you've got AND gates, so if both of them are correct, you'll put a positive. An OR gate is if either of them, and then you've got an XOR gate, which is like a bit of a comparison chip. And you've got like loads of others. you also got numerical values, like times and things like that, because you get constant values that you can put in, as well as greater than, less than, and other uh, ones like that. So, yes, there's a fair bit of logic in this, and those are the only ones I've personally played about with there's probably a lot more and well you go in a sandbox and you see there's loads more so anyway it does go forward let's go to let's see if it go, turns this corner if it turns the corner then we've done good okay it's done good let's max speed it and well i'll tell you what it's turning the corners whether or not it's going to turn this corner though i think it's not i think it's going to fail <gasps> it worked it worked oh i'm very very pleased see this is what I think makes the game just a little bit extra, because I've been trying this before, and I've been I've been doing loads of different types of like using different types of logic and messing around with things uh, and this placement of the sensors, but it didn't occur to me to simply move the wheels. But that's where you get this really really good, um, com you get a good nice combination of building and stuff. You get. You're building not only the physical stuff on the outside, then, you, then you're wiring it up. So it matters. Whatever you do to one will affect the other. It's not just a game about programming or a game about building. It's about doing both of them together. And I think that's why uh, why I like it, really. Well, among other things, but I like the fact that, you know, it matters where you place things. The weight and stuff is calculated, the the rotation and the angles and, you know, the centre of gravity is all, uh, it all matters. Especially when you're making uh, a lot more difficult robots where you have to, for example, climb walls or go over, use different sensor stuff. And yeah, there's a, there's a lot here. There's a fair lot, a fair bit here. But that is my short video and certainly first impressions of Logic Bots. I really do like it. However, I must confess, I don't know how much of it I'm going to play. Simply because I know, like every puzzle game ever, that I will get to a point and I won't be able to get any further. And I will simply go, I'm stuck. And either look for a solution, which sort of points, which sort of defeats the whole point in the game, or I'll just give up. But that is nothing to do with the game, that is all personal. So I've shown you a bit of it. There is a demo available. Links in the description so you can check the uh, store page out yourself and check it out. I, from what I've played, I think it's really, really, really good. It's got good building. I like the combinations and the stuff, the things you can do. Challenges seem to be good. Again, the sandbox stuff there. There's a Steam Workshop, I believe, as well, but personally haven't tried it. And um, maybe at some point there'll be like uh, guides and stuff on the Steam uh, on the um, on the on the. Uh, start on the Steam page so you can actually go right well, I'm stuck on this one can we go further at the time recording there wasn't any guides or anything on there but um, you know as I said sort of defeats it but if you like the idea of building a robot programming things messing around with it then you know this has got your back I think links in the description so you can check it out yourself thank you very much for watching take care and generic partings I don't know what it is as well but watching this little turtle thing going around is um, quite quite hypnotic <laughs>